The Spring Festival period is an important holiday for families. Many Chinese people work and study in cities far away from home. And when the Spring Festival season arrives, most employees get 7 to 12 days off while students enjoy a month-long winter break. The long holiday gives them a chance to return to their families after a year or many years apart. This season triggers the Spring Festival Travel Rush or Chun Yun, Chun for Spring, and Yun for to move or to transport. No matter where they are, people will brave through crowded train stations, bus terminals, and airports just to return home for a family reunion. So in China, there are two huge holidays. The Spring Festival and the National Day holiday. Both of these holidays are a week long. And so people take advantage of this long holiday to travel, to celebrate, to be with their families. Work culture in China is very, very hectic. There's a lot of pressure and very, very busy. That's why Spring Festival, apart from, you know, the traditional celebrations and meaning behind it, it's also a time to decompress and to rest and to reset. Why do people travel so much? We have to remember that a lot of Chinese are also migrants within their own country. A lot of people have moved to the cities or somewhere far away to work, to study, and so Spring Festival is a time for them to come back home and be with their families. Which formulate the Chinese cultural rationals and part of Chinese communities. So the cultural and social factors made the yearly Spring Festival transportation rush record Chun Yun. Even during the pandemic, the national total transportation is still very big. In 2021, for example, the transportation is totally 87 billion. That is the 70% of last year, and uh, also 30% um, less than 29. And according to the transportation minister, in 2022, the number will increase to 118 billion, according to the transportation minister. That would be 30% more than last year, 2021. So how to deal with the whole cities and the pandemic, anti-pandemic is really a very big challenge to the Chinese people also. Some families also take advantage of this holiday to travel together to famous spots in China and abroad. The total trips made by plane, train, bus, ship, and private cars can reach nearly a total of 3 billion trips over 40 days during the season, making it the largest annual human migration in the world. Days before the New Year's Day, there will be a flowery street in southern cities where many flowers and lots of decorations are being sold. Lots of people will walk around even if they don't intend to buy anything and just enjoying the sights and sound. But in these streets, you can find every red decoration you will need for the festival. And when the spring festival arrives, entire neighborhoods are splashed with the color red. Houses are decorated with red spring festival couplets, red lanterns, and red paper cuttings. City streets are lit up by red lanterns, and numerous people are all dressed in red. This is because red in Chinese culture is the symbol of happiness, wealth, and prosperity. It's said that it can ward off evil spirits and bring good luck. The atmosphere for the dining sometimes are as important as the food itself. As you can see behind me, there is a pair of Chunlian, special Chinese handwriting. It is known as Spring Couplets or Chinese New Year Couplets. It remains to be one of the most common and important cultural custom for Chinese New Year. In ancient times, when handwriting was one most important skills for educated people, they will write Spring Couplets by their own. However, with the wide use of computers, now cell phones, fewer and fewer people can write good-looking traditional Chinese handwriting. 
as it takes years to develop the skill. But don't worry, we can buy online nowadays. Pasting couplets expresses people's delight in the festival and goodwill in the coming year. One of the first things that people notice during the Spring Festival are the red banners that adorn doorways of every house. The top horizontal banner is called Chun Tiao and contains two to four characters greeting. The two vertical ones are called Chun Lian or Spring Festival Couplets. Couplets are two lines of poetry that complement or reflect each other in form and meaning. These banners combined produce an auspicious message for everyone and serves as an invitation for blessings to enter the house. Another ubiquitous decoration we see is the Fu character. This character means good fortune in the Chinese language. Many homes traditionally hang it upside down to allude to the phrase Fu Dao La. Fu is upside down, which is a pun of Fu Dao La, which means good blessing has arrived. Hi, I'm Joel C. Serrat Ferrer, and I wear many hats. This one. <laughs> Actually, another hat that I'm wearing right now is the hat of the family clan historian and genealogist, because I represent the C family clan of my mom and the Ferrer family clan of my dad. Over the past few years, I had the privilege to be invited to several Chinese New Year celebrations by some of my mainlander friends who are here in the Philippines. And uh, since I never attended uh, Chinese New Year, a Chinese New Year celebration in mainland China, I guess this is the next best thing. So I'd like to give a few similarities and differences between uh, how mainlanders here in the Philippines celebrate Chinese New Year vis-a-vis -vis how Chinois celebrate Chinese New Year over here. So let's start with similarities. Just like the typical uh, Chinoy Chinese celebration, I noticed that Mainlanders also wear red, they also eat Chinese food, definitely dumplings should be there, and uh, they also hang lanterns. But here's one difference. I noticed that before they eat their meals, they would like to stack you know, the plates of food on top of each other, uh, so as to give the impression that they have overflowing food, and maybe symbolically overflowing abundance for the coming new year. So that's one uh, difference that I noticed that mainlanders do that uh, I haven't seen here in the Philippines. Another difference is that mainlanders normally watch this uh, program, a national program in China over CCTV where you have a countdown before the clock reaches 12 or midnight and the uh, New Year starts. Okay, so it's, it's kind of similar to the show in the United States that is uh, broadcast live from New York, right? They also have like a New Year's countdown. And I noticed that as the clock approached midnight, a lot of the mainlanders would bring out their phones and start calling their relatives that are in, in China. Obviously, it was a happy occasion for the uh, Chinese compatriots to meet their, uh, well, to use the Filipino term, kababayans who are here in the Philippines. But I also noticed that those that were not that happy were those who were here alone. Uh, if they didn't have any family members, you could see that they were not as happy as those that have their family members here. Because of course, uh, Chinese New Year is indeed a family event for people from mainland China. So I, I, get, uh, I get to uh, ask myself sometimes, how, how do uh, Filipinos in mainland China feel? Uh, Filipinos who are also far away from their families who are uh, here in the Philippines during Chinese New Year. Uh, about the memories here in China, especially every Chinese New Year, no, a lot, a lot, and I'm a bit uh, emotional right now. It was just like uh, reminiscing to me because I used to be a singer uh, way back, more than one decade, and you know my experience there is just like uh, really amazing. Especially every Chinese New Year, because we're spent together, just like a one family. We're eating together, we're celebrating together. And so every day, every night, most of my friends are there. It it seems like uh, they are one of the one of my families because they're all there for us 
trick. Of course, the special, the special part is give you. They give you the hong bao. So every time we sang a Chinese, Chinese uh, New Year song. Kung hi pa choy, kung choy santo, choy santo, kung si pa chay. Actually, it's not a number. Yeah, it's a simple envelope, but you felt more good every time you you, you receive that because you feel you can feel inside that you are a part of their family you're part of their beliefs and traditions and that's the most important thing it's a great time to be a kid during the spring festival instead of receiving wrapped gifts like what they usually receive at christmas children get hong bao or red envelopes stuffed with lucky money from grandparents uncles aunts neighbors and friends of the family this money is called Yasui Chin, which means money to ward off old age, as it is given in the hope that the child will live a long and happy life. Fireworks are an indispensable part of the celebration to liven up the air of Spring Festival. Traditionally, fireworks and firecrackers are used to scare away evil spirits. The louder and brighter the explosions, the better. During the Spring Festival, whether in the city or the countryside, we can see some very distinct traditional performances that are staples of Chinese celebrations. First, the Lion Dance. In traditional Chinese culture, the lion is regarded as a symbol of power, wisdom, longevity, and superiority. Having the Lion Dance performed during celebrations is believed to bring good luck and drive away the evil spirits. There are two main kinds of lions. The northern lions are usually red and yellow and have shaggy fur. Southern lions have curly, fluffy fur and come in a variety of colors. They also have a horn and mirror on their heads. Lion dance performers are trained Kung Fu practitioners. The moves that they do are based on their particular school and area's traditional choreography. The performers will move and imitate a lion to the beats of drums and gongs and sometimes even perform acrobatic tricks to amaze and delight the crowd. The dragon dance is another traditional festive performance that cannot be missed. Chinese dragons are symbols of power, dignity, fertility, wisdom, and luck. In the ancient times, people believed that dragons brought rain and so during dry seasons, they performed the dragon dance to invoke the fearsome yet benevolent creature to make it rain. Unlike the Western idea of the dragon that breeds fire, the Chinese dragon is a creature of the water. And when there is water, there is life. And so, whenever there is a dragon dance, people prefer a long dragon. The longer the dragon, the more luck it brings. Generally, the dragon dance is performed by many people holding up and controlling the dragon. In some communities, the dragons are so long that they require 20 to 30 people to carry them. In a typical dragon dance, one person uses a pearl-like thing to lead the dragon. The dragon will follow it, rising or falling, slowly or rapidly. These movements mimic a dragon flying up to the sky or hiding under the ocean and breaking waves. The dragon chasing the pearl is a depiction of the dragon pursuing wisdom. In our next episode, 